Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas. In today's surf tip, we're headed to Rusty headquarters in San Diego to hang out with Rusty and learn a little bit more about surfboard design on some questions that you guys ask me about all the time. Either you're gonna like this, sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. Yeah, so Rusty, I get asked a bunch of questions and it's always about board design. You know, somebody buys a board and we gave it a good review, it's a favorite, whatever, and they say, oh, you know, the board feels pretty good, but it doesn't work that good for me. And then I have to get into questions like, what's the board not doing for you? Um, that's well, that's going well. Uh -huh. And um, the other questions are, you know, sizing for me, did, I, did they buy it too big or too small? So I kind of go through this process with um, somebody in our community or multiple people that have a similar problem. And, um, you know, we don't all surf the same. Some guys are heavily front-footed. Some guys are heavily back-footed. Some guys are neutral. They kind mm. of drive the board from the middle. Front-footed guys drive it real heavy off the front foot, so when they go into a cutback, mm. because they're so far forward, the tail just lets go, and they slide out all the time. Mm. And so I've, I've understood and tried to help our community kind of control that a little bit with fins, you know, going with a fin that has more rake, Maybe a fin that has a wider tip plus more rake mm -hmm. that will give us more hold. Make sure they're riding fins that all three fins are the same size instead of like an Almeric set might have a smaller center fin, mm -hmm. which will cause it to let go a little bit at the peak of a turn yeah. if you're at the top of the wave. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But I feel like some of my questions that I feel that would help our community, will help me to learn, is when you start to design a board let's say you come out with a new model mm -hmm. something's inspiring you to do that mm -hmm. let's take like a small wave performance board mm -hmm. when you're going in to design that board do you ever have foot orientation in mind and i'm not talking about regular footed or goofy footed i'm talking about this board that i'm creating i'm, I'm thinking like i'm you i'm going to design a board that best suits a neutral footed surfer, front footed, back footed surfer, or this should go across the board and everybody should relatively have a good time on this board. Mm -hmm. People come in all levels of ability and most of the time they're not honest about their ability or they don't have a realistic picture of their ability. And so I try and, I try and get from them how they really surf, where they surf, what types of waves they surf. Uh, some people have had a lot of boards and they're pretty familiar with what their needs are in terms of length, width, thickness, volume. I get beginners that want to try a 6-2. They're coming off a, an 8-foot wave storm and I go, no. Yeah. <laughs> Take it maybe 6 inches at a time. question I always ask them is, whatever question you're asking, take it to an extreme. Like, well, what if I get more rocker? Well, what if you get a lot more rocker? And they go, oh. Right. You know, what if I get a little bit lower nose entry and I go what if you get a lot lower nose entry or what if you get you know a little bit thicker a lot thicker you know it's like a lot of times it, it, people think about it and they go oh yeah I get it um, you know experienced shapers are always trying to find a balance mm -hmm. and I mean uh, in the last couple of years I've had Wade come on board and I was tripping on Wade's boards at first and he's a big guy and but his volume was about right. But his, I like to shape for the most part a very a very balanced thickness profile. You know, within five hundredths, maybe a tenth of an inch difference. Maybe uh, Wade's tail was when we first started building boards. This five eleven had five and a quarter inches of nose rocker. I haven't seen nose rocker like that since the early Kelly Slater um, Emperor's New Clothes. You know, right. Kelly's boards were so bent and so narrow, but Kelly was Kelly. Um, but Wade had a ton of nose rocker, and he had a he had about 2.35 inches of tail rocker, which is, you know, for me when I first started building the boards a couple of years ago, I thought it was a bit. But he also had a fairly deep single concave, so I went with it. But his tail block was wide, and his tail block was insanely thick, and the board was at least a quarter inch thicker in the back half, and I went with it, but over t over time, 
uh, his boards have evolved and have changed a little bit. I, I, I have a civilian version of the keg now where on a 6, 511, 6.0, the nose rocker is like 4.7 or 4.8, which is still a fair bit for a board that size for most people. Mm. And the tail rocker is still the same. And the tail is not quite as, the tail block isn't quite as wide. So you know, every six months the board, you know, sometimes quicker, sometimes slower, but boards evolve. You know, the same concepts there, but the boards evolve. And, uh, and then more recently, Kyle Belly, his, his nose rockers were pretty heavy, but his tail, I mean, his tail, 2.4 and a 5.6, you know, I, mm. but it got me thinking. And the smaller the surfer, the tighter the turning radius and the more rocker relatively he needs. And so, you know, m my thinking is evolving too, you know, with, especially with more experienced, better test riders, t test pilots. Grovler is basically, uh, you know, I found, you know, you're, you're better off the lower entry, a little bit fuller outline, and the tail rocker, not as flat as I used to think, but, it, you know, it's still not as aggressive as a high-performance shortboard, but it's definitely more than I used to do. What inspires you to design a new model? I hear you talking about team riders, mm -hmm. and you, you, your initial um, response was, you, when you work with the general surf community, most people don't know their own skill level and I, I i agree i agree with that comment i gently try to guide them yeah gently. we gently try to guide them i try and do that to help them pick the right board but i feel like the reason i come up with these questions is if i'm talking to somebody that surfs heavily front-footed to your point a lot of our community doesn't they don't even know if they're heavily front-footed neutral or back-footed yeah. they wouldn't even know yeah. about that about that for themselves but there are people out there that, that understand yeah. that they're heavily front-footed and I think the real question becomes are there certain boards that when they walk into a surf shop and you know that you're heavily front-footed or you're heavily back-footed that there's something in the board design that you can look at the attributes of that board yeah. and say this is going to favor this type of surfer I think it's an easy answer you on a front foot surfer you do a volume, you do an area shift forward, you know, subtle, maybe, uh, you know, a nose that's a half inch wire, the wide points maybe up an inch, and the volume, the thickness flow is favoring forward. To me, the answer is, is easy, like Wade's kind of a back foot surfer, does the big power carves. So his area and volume is pulled back, and then, um, Okay, with that comment right there, I want to pause. I want to take your thought process right now, and I want to put that on a small wave groveler that has a wide nose, uh -huh. the wide points front from center, they're driving the board off the front foot through a cutback, and the board's catching up front. The liabilities of a wider nose board doesn't seem to suit a f heavily front-footed surfer as well as something that maybe didn't have all that area up there. Um, Would you agree, I, disagree? I, I, I disagree because you have to take into consideration the amount of overall curve. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of like gravel boards that don't have much outline curve and in a rocker. Um, like, you know, a lot of it goes back to the entry. And if you want to get in the waves quick and early, you want to drive down the line, you drop the entry rocker. If you want to start bringing your, your arcs tighter, more up the face, you add a little bit more rocker. If you want to come right up the face, you got to have a rocker on both ends. You're going to have a white nose, but you can have uh, plenty of rocker. I, you know, I think if you're, if you know you're a front foot surfer and you're in a shop shopping for a board, I'd look for, not an exaggeration, but a board that has subtly got more area up front, got more volume up front and it's hard to tell by looking you can yeah. kind of tell by feeling mm -hmm. sure but you, you, you know like a tenth of an inch an eighth of an inch that an eighth of an inch is starting to become in my book significant except when you're talking about maybe guns the longer the bore the bigger the waves the more sure. more volume you want up front mm -hmm. um i think you also mentioned a curvier outline something that has like a curvier outline here as opposed to something that has a straighter outline with not much entry rocker yeah. might give us all a little bit of fits unless we're surfing it really off the tail 
and still it's not going to fit you know it's still not going to fit the wave right. it, it, you'll have problems with those types of boards right. and then the fins yeah fins play a huge part in it and yeah. i feel like i feel like we can really change the way a board rides by manipulating the fin absolutely i mean you know if i get a board that's not giving me a, a tighter arcing turn i you know i'm i like a I like a raked fin for a bunch of reasons, but if I'm on a board that has, it's wide, it doesn't have a lot of exit rocker, and I want to get it top to bottom real quick, I'm going to ride probably a large um, up, upright, upright template yeah, up because right, yeah. I can get that board to do what I want yeah. by manipulating the fin. Yeah. And that's usually where I start with our community, but I really feel like I, I, have, I have a desire to feel the response of a board and then start to pinpoint what it is that I like yeah. And it seems to me, for me personally, I do like boards with a little curvier outline yeah. as opposed to a board that's a really straight outline. Yeah. I have a tendency, since I'm a back-footed surfer and I want to pivot and get in the lip real quick, uh -huh. I like my wide point at center or maybe a little behind center. Yeah, yeah. Right? And then I have friends that, that are heavily front-footed surfers, excellent surfers, by the way. Uh -huh. um, I would put them in the expert level uh -huh. and boards that I love they don't like at all because they can't keep the tail engaged so I'll, I'll just call out a couple different boards that have that problem for them not for yeah, me yeah. Um, like uh, Neckbeard 2 has that chopped square tail which super wide is carrying a lot of lift and, and the boards fast and it's going top to bottom quick and the but front surfers, front foot surfers don't like it? Front foot surfers have a tendency to lose it in the cutback. The tail's too wide. Because the tail's so wide. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so look, you laugh. This is what's funny to me. You laugh, it's like that's a no-brainer. Yeah. However, however, you're speaking to a community yeah. that we can't act like this is, everybody should know it because we don't all know that. Mm -hmm. So if someone, if I know somebody's a heavily front-footed surfer and they want to buy a board and let's say, it has a wide tail block, yeah. and I know they have this problem. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna push them towards that board. Yeah. I'm gonna push them away from that board. Yeah, right. Because Volume and area want, forward. Right. Unless you're gonna ride this board, and I get real specific. One to three foot and below, you're gonna want the speed that mm -hmm. board produces. Mm -hmm. However, but when you're outside that three foot and you're going super fast, yeah. you won't be able to hold it because all your weight's forward. And it's created the wider tail's creating a lot of lift. Yes. Even if it's got a lot of rocker it's still creating a lot of lift right for our community straight up i could say you know boards that have a wider tail block and you're sur and you're heavily front footed and you're surfing four to six foot you, that's probably not a good choice for you mm -mm. right because it's creating more lift yeah. and it's going to be harder to keep that that um, tail engaged well let me first say that i feel like asking you that question about what you think for someone that's heavily front-footed i think those are good answers with more foam under the front foot obviously because they're pushing so hard off the front foot yeah, yeah right so moving that foam forward yeah curvier outline will make it easier to go top to bottom and do a tighter turn in in most waves um yeah so yeah those those are definitely good points and then i still think that uh, a board that has a really wide nose just has its own liabilities. I mean, sure, it paddles better. Mm. Sure, it's gonna it carry up, maybe get through flat spots a little bit better depending on rocker. But I think overall, I think that helps um, answer that question for me. Well, yeah. thanks for joining us on the show and helping our community. Yeah. And it's always a pleasure to uh, learn and, and speak to you about boards. Thanks, Rusty. You're very welcome. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's surf tip, hanging out with Rusty learning more about surfboard design. Now, if you have questions about building a quiver or even ordering your next board, I highly recommend our surfboard consulting. You can find that at surfandshow.com under the coaching tab. I also put the link in the YouTube description below. Special shout out thanks to Rusty for joining us on the show. Look, if you like the show, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss an episode, and give us a thumbs up if you like our content. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.